issue a person notices he has some kind of lesion. The lesion has an intense white color and the certain indicators which indicate whether it's something which is a leprous lesion, which would cause him to be sent out of all three camps, which we call tsaras, it's what we call the Torah leprosy. And if not, it's just that discoloration means nothing. So we're in Pesach Gimel. Ruach Kohen is Hanega, Be'or HaBosor. The Kohen sees the lesion on the skin of the flesh. The Ser Banega, Hofach Lovum. Initially, the hair that was in that location was black, and it turned white. Omar HaNega, Omok Mior Besoro. And the color of the lesion because of its intensity of white, it looks as if it's there's like a, a depression in the flesh. Negatsarasu. That's an indication. It's a leprous lesion. If it has this intensity of whiteness, which it looks like there's like a, a depression in the skin and the black hair turned white, these are indicators that it's it's the true issue of, of taras, of leprosy. Vra Kohen, the Kohen sees it, the Timeoso, and he contaminates him. Now, without the pronouncement of the Kohen, even if factually it is a leprous lesion, the person is not contaminated, the person does not have to go out of the camp. It's only with the pronouncement of the Kohen, only then does it assume that contaminated status the status of a leprous lesion, only then he has to go out of the camp. So therefore, the Gemara tells us that let's say a person is about to approach the regal, and if he's pronounced to be a leper, he has to go out of his camp. Or a person just got married, and he has a Sheva Brochus, the seven days of celebration about to happen, and if he's pronounced contaminated, it's going to disrupt his celebration. We hold it off. We hold it off till after Yom Tif. Or until after the celebration is finished, not to disrupt the celebration. Why? And the Torah, it's based on a verse, the Torah alludes to this, that you have a right to push it off. Because in its essence, it does not contaminate. It's not something which I said is contagious, when we speak about the conventional leprosy, like you have leper colonies. This is all an indication the person reached a certain level of impurity, of sin, and therefore it only comes back when he's pronounced to be that so-called sinner, that it's reached that critical point, and therefore it, the Kohen pronounces him as contaminated, as the real thing, and therefore he has to go out of the camp. So if the coin does not, so although he has the lesion, which has all the characteristics of the leprous lesion, he's not tummy. It's all based upon the pronouncement of the coin. Now the question is why the coin? Only the coin. If Rabbi Akiva, as great as he was, if he would pronounce it, and he understood all the aspects of what is and what's not a leprous lesion. If you print, 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 say this is the real thing and this is a leprous lesion, it will not af affect the person's status whatsoever. The pronouncement has to come from a Kohen. There's a Gemara, which the Gemara says that, that even if a Kohen is unstable, unstable, and he pronounces it Tomei, it's Tomei. We all know that a person who's a shota is not considered competent and his action and his pronouncement means nothing. So why, when it comes to the pronouncement of the leprous lesion, even the Kohen shota, even the Kohen who's incompetent, why does his pronouncement have any value? So Tosis answers that when it says a Kohen shota, a Kohen who's unstable, his pronouncement 
affects the person's status, it doesn't mean he's a shoter. Means, even if he's totally ignorant, he has no idea, no understanding of what is and what's not. And somebody like Rabbi Akiva would tell him that this is the real thing, that this lesion meets all the criteria and all the characteristics of what a lesion is. And Rabbi Akiva says to the coin, this is the real thing. And then the coin would say, Negatsorasu, this is a leprous lesion. That pronouncement now will impact on the person. So we're talking about a person who's fully competent to coin, except he has no understanding of what is and what's not. So the not coin, the not coin, like Rabbi Akiva or someone who's fully competent in this area, understanding what is and what's not, if he explains to him it is, just the words of the Kohen saying, Tome, that's enough to impact on the person's classification. Now the question is, why always the pronouncement of Kohen? So over here, the Sepharno cites a posuk, famous posuk, the Gemara says, Sifse Kohen Yishmu Das, that the lips of the Kohen are the keepers of the faith. Tavakish Tormi Piu, you should seek Torah from his mouth. Kimalach Hashem Tzvados, because he's the equivalent of a Malach, of an angel. Therefore, when we speak about the keepers of the faith, the ones who are responsibility, responsible to maintain the standard of Judaism, that's the coin's responsibility. Where do we find this? Firstly, it's based on this puzzle. Secondly, when Moshe blesses the tribes before he passes away, the last day of his life, he says, Ula Levi Omar. To Levi said, Yoru Mishpatech Yaakov. Yoru, you should be the ones to disseminate the laws to Yaakov. So the one who's responsible for the dissemination of Torah, firstly, Shevet Levi. We have Nochem Yudon, Nachi, Shevet Levi. They are responsible for what? For the dissemination of Torah. But the one who is the ultimate of Levi is the Kohen. That's our own and his descendants. That's Sivse Kohen Yishbu Das. We say they're responsible for the kapora, for the atonement of the Jewish people. To make sure, spiritually speaking, they are where they should be. That's responsibility for the Kohen. Therefore, since this lesion is due to a spiritual failing, therefore he's the one who makes the pronouncement which affects the person's classification, whether he's permitted to remain in the camps or he has to go out of the camps. It's based on this posuk of Sifse Kohen Yishbu Das. Now... So if, wait, if wait a second, no questions. Uh, until I finish the Gara Torah, no questions. Yeah. So yeah. What, what I said was, there's another Sifarno, it says that the Kohen goes and he speaks to him, and over here, he sequesters him for seven days, where it's questionable whether it is or whether it's not. Pasuk Dalet, it says, Vim Baharis Levonahi, Bar Besoro, it is a lesion which is white, but it it's not, doesn't have that intensity where it's, it seems to be a depression in the person's flesh. And the hair is still black, it didn't change to white because these are the indicators that it's a leprous lesion. The Kohen goes and he sequesters the nega for seven days. Me, the person goes into sequestering and to wait, it's a wait and see moment. And the coin sees it on the seventh day. And the lesion remained as it was. The lesion did not spread. In terms of its size, it was the same size. He sequesters him for a second seven-day period. Because it's unknown exactly where this is going. So in Pesach when it says, the Kohen sees it on the seventh day. What, what does he do when he sees it? He just examines it and evaluates it and he says, we have to wait another seven days. So over here, if you take a look in the Sifarno, there's a Xeris HaKosov, a divine decree that the contamination of, the, of these leprous lesions and to the purification, when he, even when he recovers, 
he's only considered pure to be able to begin the process to re-enter into the camp. It's all based on the pronouncement of the Kohen. He sifse Kohen Yishmu Das. Now, what is that? The Yore Lemnuga Lefashish B'masov. What's the coin's responsibility? He tells the one who has the lesion, he has to introspect, which is a prerequisite to tshuva. The ispalel atzmo, and he should pray on his own behalf. The ispalel gama coin olav, and the coin also prays for him, for the, his recovery. He first he tells him to introspect to understand why this happened, and therefore he has to pray for himself, and the coin also prays for him, without his own introspection and own personal supplication, and the coin pr- praying for him, since the only one who can make this evaluation is pronouncement over the coin, since it's limited to only the Kohen, they, they acquire an expertise to be able to evaluate what is and what's not. Since the Kohanim are the only ones who actually are qualified to do this, so usually the Kohen himself, through his experience and his, over time, seeing many similar situations, he will get expertise. But the main thing I wanted to show you is Ra Kohen. It's after the seventh day, it's, it's unclear where it's going. Is, he, is this the real thing or not the real thing? It didn't spread, the hair didn't turn white. So question is in second day period. We'll see what happens. After seven days, he examines it again. Now, we're gonna see that even if it turned out to be nothing, the person is Tommy. Not, not, not a Mitzorah. He's not a leper. He has to go to the mikvah. Like a person who came in contact with a rodent with a source of contamination. And he has to wait till evening to be re- reinstated as a person of purity. Now the question is, if it turned out not to be a leprous lesion, why is he tummy? Let's see further. The nega became lighter. It didn't have that, that intensity of whiteness. Lofosa negbor, and the lesion did not spread. The tira coin, the coin pronounces him tor, mispachasi. It's just a discoloration. The chibes begot of tor. The level of contamination is not only is he contaminated, the clothing he wore are also contaminated. Now the question is. If, in fact, it turned out to be nothing, why is it contaminated? And why is the contamination to the degree that not only is he contaminated, if a person touches a sheritz, touches a rodent, which contaminates him, if he's wearing clothing, the clothing don't become contaminated. Because when you touch a sheritz, what do you become? The sheritz is the source of the contamination. So the sheritz is called avatuma. That's where it begins. When you touch it, you become a rishon. You are the first level of association with that, the clothing on your body are a sheni. A rishon does not make a sheni when it comes to clothing. A kli, a vessel, or an article of clothing, the only way it could become contaminated has to be in direct contact with the source of contamination. That's the only time once clothing becomes tummy. So, but yet by the mitzorah, by other situations, when the person here is in this questionable state, not only does he have to go to the mikvah, his clothing also have to be immersed in the mikvah. The question is why. Firstly, why is he contaminated? It turned out to be nothing. After the sequestering, it turned out it got it became lighter, and it turned out to be nothing. And not only is he contaminated, even his clothing is contaminated. Why? Now, the Kohen told him to pray for himself. First, to introspect. To pray for himself, he says, I will pray for you. That's what he told him. Now the question is, as we said, if a woman is pregnant and it's already past 40 days after conception, we said if you pray, it's called the tefillah's shove. It's a tefillah in vain, because whatever it is. If actually this 
lesion is or is not, and it's a wait and see situation. What what's pray, prayer prayer going to help you? The answer is, it's evolving into something. You know, as we say, you know, you nip it in the bud, it's not going to happen. I Meaning, the man himself is in the balance. Is he going to become a leper? Not become a leper. It's dependent. If he does tshuva, Hashem will not allow allow him to cross that line to be classified as a leper. If he doesn't do tshuva, as we say, it's a slippery slope. He's going to he's going to hit the bottom of the mountain real quick. So therefore, because he's in the balance, and there's enough level of prosecution against him that he deserves to be pronounced a leper. It's only his tefillah and his tshuva. That's what's actually causing it to be the state execution. Therefore, he's contaminated when it turns out that he recovered. It's not that it wasn't. It wasn't meant to be. He's already tainted with that because it's only due to the tshuva that it didn't become more intense and more severe. That's the reason why he's contaminated. He doesn't have the contamination of a leper per se, which is a much more lengthy process. He has to shave his hair. He has to do many other things till he's reinstated. Here he was on the path to become that. And it was questioned whether he was going to be pronounced that, whether it was going to evolve with that or not. Therefore, as a result, that it turned out that it was not, it wasn't just, it was not, it was a, mis- it was a question of how to diagnose it. It wasn't, that's not the issue. The issue is, is it going to get worse or not? Is the tshuva going to be effective? Not going to be tshuva, effective. But at this point, he has a, a very weighty negative record. And because of that record, that's why this whole thing became, came about. Therefore, he has to go to the mikvah. And not only is he contaminated, even his clothing are contaminated for that reason.